What's going on guys? Welcome back. Moving on to the next video where we're estimating the population mean with confidence intervals. So as a quick review of the previous video, which if you didn't watch, highly recommend you do before watching this one. I stated that a confidence interval is basically the sample mean plus or minus something called the margin of error. And I kind of generally went over how confidence intervals work, the intuition behind them. And then we talked about how can we decrease this margin of error? How can we tighten up that confidence interval in order to get a better estimate of the population mean? And we came up with three strategies. So the first one is we could decrease the confidence percentage. So instead of having like a 90% confidence interval, we could have a 60% confidence interval, which would decrease that margin of error. But that's not the best strategy to go about it. We don't want to decrease our confidence in estimating that population mean. Second, we can increase the sample size, right? Because the larger a sample you're taking from a population, the more representative it's going to be of the overall population. So that's going to give you a better estimate. And then the third strategy, we said we can know what the population standard deviation is. Right? The more we know about a population, we don't know the mean because that's what we're estimating, but if we can know the population standard deviation, then that gives us more of an accurate estimate, and so we have a tighter confidence interval, a better estimate, and so that decreases our margin of error. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking this margin of error down more technically to show you how we can calculate it. And the first thing that the margin of error calculation is going to depend on is actually this third point here. Whether the population standard deviation is known or whether it is unknown. Now, if the population standard deviation is known, what we're going to do to get this confidence interval Right, to calculate this margin of error, we're going to use the Z distribution or the normal distribution, which I've done videos on before. And I'm going to show you specifically how we apply the Z distribution in calculating the margin of error. But for now, I want you to know if the population standard deviation is known, we use the Z distribution. Now, if it's unknown, we're going to use something called the T distribution which you probably haven't heard of yet, and I'm going to explain just in general what it is, how it compares to the Z distribution. Now, sometimes certain courses, they'll break this down even further. So they'll say, if you know the population standard deviation and the sample size is less than 30 or greater than 30, right? So they'll add like another parameter here right, depending on what the sample size is, same thing here. So if the population standard deviation is unknown, they'll say, is the sample size less than 30 or is it greater than 30? And so they'll further break this down in terms of what distribution to use. So if it's less than 30, sometimes here, they'll say you should use the T distribution still because the sample size is just lower, right? It's pretty small. Versus if it's uh, greater than 30, and you know the population standard deviation, you can use the Z distribution. Here, you always use the T distribution if it's unknown and the sample is less than 30, right? Because you just don't know anything about the population at that point. And sometimes they'll say if the sample is greater than 30, even if you still don't know the population standard deviation, they'll say sometimes you could use the Z distribution here. It could be your choice of a Z or T distribution. So just be aware of that, depending on what prof you have, what textbook you're using, what course you're taking. Sometimes there's like additional parameters here, depending on which, and um, that will determine what distribution you use. But for this video, all I'm gonna focus on is these two parameters. So if the population standard deviation is known, no matter what the sample size is, we're gonna use the Z distribution. And if the population standard deviation is unknown, no matter what the sample size is, we're going to be using the T distribution. So now, how does a Z distribution compare to a T distribution? What is a T distribution anyway? It's actually very similar to a Z distribution. And honestly, the most productive way I think to think about these is that the Z distribution is going to give you a smaller margin of error. 
or a tighter confidence interval, while the T distribution is going to give you a larger margin of error. And that makes sense because, as we stated, if we want to decrease this margin of error, what was the third strategy? We can know what the population standard deviation is. And so if we know what it is, then the Z distribution is going to give us a smaller margin of error. Right? The uh, confidence interval is going to be tighter. Versus here, T distribution, we use it when we don't know the population standard deviation. The less we know about the population, the less confident we could be in our estimate, and so we need a larger margin of error. And the way that happens, the way that both of these look visually, if you were to compare them, so this here is the Z distribution, bell-shaped curve as we know, and the T distribution is also a bell-shaped curve. It's going to be very similar to the Z distribution, but it looks like this. Right, so this here is the T distribution. Now knowing the differences visually, it's not as important, right? The most important thing is knowing how to calculate this margin of error and knowing which distribution to use and how to use it, which I'm going to explain soon. But I think knowing, having an intuitive sense of the difference between a T distribution and a Z distribution is going to help you when you're doing questions. You're going to sort of know why you're using either or of these distributions versus sort of blindly doing the questions. So notice the difference between these is that the T distribution, it's sort of wider, right? It's wider, but it has a lower sort of maximum point. The Z distribution has a higher maximum point. Sometimes you'll see the T distribution being described as having fatter tails or wider tails than the uh, Z distribution. And that makes sense. So, for example, let's say this is the Z distribution. And let's say that I want to get an area of 90% over here. It's actually what we're going to be doing to get a 90% confidence interval, but I'm going to explain that further. Just pretend that this here, this area, it's 90%, and it's perfectly symmetrical. So this is in the Z distribution. Now, the way it's going to look like in a T distribution Let's say a T distribution is like that. 90% is going to be, let's say over here, like this, this kind of area. Notice that the interval is a lot wider for a T distribution versus with a Z distribution, the 90% area is, um, is small. It's like uh, more compact. It's thinner. And that makes sense because the Z distribution, this is what we're going to be using to calculate the margin of error. And so if we're dealing with a tighter area, like a skinnier area, we're going to have a smaller margin of error. Versus if we're dealing with a wider interval, then we're going to have a larger margin of error. And that's why the T distribution is used here. right? And it makes sense because if the population standard deviation is unknown, we got to have a larger margin. Of error. So that's the difference between a Z distribution and a T distribution and kind of the intuitive sense of why we're going to use one versus the other. Now one thing I want to mention about the uh, T distribution is there's actually multiple T distributions. All right so hopefully this doesn't confuse you any further. There's actually multiple T distributions. There's one Z distribution, but there's multiple T distributions, and they depend on something called the degrees of freedom. And basically what the degrees of freedom is, is the sample size minus one, right? The sample size you're using minus one. So what T distribution you're using basically depends on the sample size right? Because the degrees of freedom depends on the sample size. And so what happens is as you increase, let's uh, write here, as you increase your sample size, that means that your degrees of freedom increases as well. 
And what happens as the degrees of freedom or as the sample size starts increasing for a T distribution is it actually starts becoming a Z distribution. It starts approaching a Z distribution. So this T distribution here, let's say this maybe is a um, degrees of freedom. Let's say it's like uh, 10, for example. Well, how would a T distribution with a degrees of freedom of 20 look like, right? If we're gonna have a higher sample size, it's actually gonna start looking more like a Z distribution. So this dotted line here is another T distribution, but with a higher degrees of freedom, right? So this is also a T, but let's say the degrees of freedom is maybe like 20, right? So basically, kind of separate these. As the sample size gets bigger, as it goes to infinity, what happens is the T distribution approaches, it becomes the same thing as the Z distribution, right? And that makes sense because as we mentioned, if you want to decrease this margin of error, we can increase the sample size. And so if we are increasing the sample size, then that means the degrees of freedom is increasing. And it means that the T distribution, it's going from this and it's getting tighter and tighter. So you're getting a tighter confidence interval. You're getting a smaller margin of error, right? So as you increase that sample size, that degrees of freedom starts to increase. And so that T distribution starts to have skinnier tails instead of wider tails and it starts becoming more like a Z distribution. And so that margin of error starts becoming smaller and smaller, right? So that's kind of how all of this relates into one, right? And that's how the sample size affects the, uh, the margin of error that we're gonna be calculating. Anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully you got all that. I know it's a lot to take in, but hopefully it makes intuitive sense. Basically, forgetting all of that other stuff I said, Z distribution, it's going to give you a smaller margin of error. A T distribution is going to give you a larger margin of error. And that makes sense because if you know more about the population, you're going to have a smaller margin of error. If you know less about the population, you're going to have a bigger margin of error. If you're interested more in seeing visually how the Z distribution and the T distribution relate, you can actually Google image Z distribution versus T distribution and you'll start getting diagrams like this. Right, so if you want to further uh, understand the difference between them, there's definitely more resources for you to do that. But uh, again, in this course, it's not going to be as important. It just gives you an intuitive sense of why to use both. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do examples where we're actually going to be finding the confidence of uh, the confidence interval. Right, so I'm going to be giving you scenarios. And some scenarios, you're gonna know the population standard deviation, so we're gonna use the Z distribution. Some scenarios, you're not gonna know the population standard deviation, so you're gonna have to use a T distribution. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next few videos.